Hi everyone, Shade here with my Green Witch build. I was playing Jahira and enjoying it, but I noticed that the level six Druid spells leave a little bit to be desired. So I started trying to brainstorm ways that I could uh, boost her power while also keeping a lot of the Druid stuff intact. And I think I came up with something pretty decent, especially after I was browsing around the forums and I saw that this could happen. The caveat is, is that I'm not sure if this is intentional. People seem to think it is uh, on Larian's part, but this could be patched, but it involves with uh, dipping a little bit into wizard, unlocking all levels of wizard spells. And I'll kind of show you at the end of the video. So let's get into it. At level one, I would recommend going Druid. This gives us a chance to have medium armor and shields and the ability is scimitars and we can get right into Circle of Spores quite early. But uh, you can go Wizard if you want to for some of the skill distribution because the skills will be different. But I suggest going Druid just for the extra added armors and everything unless you enjoy the robes. For cantrips, I choose Shillelagh and Thorn Whip. And then uh, skill distribution is gonna be a little different. We are not putting anything into intelligence because I'm gonna wear the warped headband of intellect that you get off the ogres in act one. This will set our intelligence to 17, which opens up a lot of ability points for us to use. But I want to get my wisdom up to 16 get my dexterity up to a 14. We'll be wearing medium armor. So 14 dex is about all we're gonna have. And most of the spells I'm gonna use are area of effect. So they don't really rely on hit too much. Um, and then we're gonna have 16 constitution. The rest of the points uh, you can distribute how you want. I'm gonna put them all into strength just so she can carry more. As far as skills go, pick the ones that you want. Um, you can go Arcana, Nature, they will be buffed by the circlet or the headband when you get it. Um, you can also go into Medicine. Uh, there's one of the wizard schools uh, does the medicine check and you can double your um, some of your alchemy. So you can go into that. I'll probably go Perception and Nature. Now at level two, uh, we're going to go Druid all the way up to level 10. We're just going to straight up go all the way in Druid and then pick up Wizard at the end. You have your choice of subclasses. Uh, you can choose Circle of the Land or Circle of the Spore. Circle of the Moon I don't think would apply, but Circle of the Land has some good things going for it. You can get another cantrip, and you also get this action of Natural Recovery where you can replenish expended spell slots. That's a really, really good choice. I'm going the more, because I call it the Green Witch, I'm going more necromancy feel so circle of spores is for me um this gives you cantrip bone chill which uh prevents living targets from healing and undead targets have disadvantage on attack rolls then you also get symbiotic entity which gives you temporary hit points then you deal an additional necrotic damage and your halo of spores reactionary ability uh, goes off twice while you have the temporary hit points but halo of spores can be used on your reaction all the time at level three, we get access to second level spells. I'll go over all the spells at the end when we have them all and just kind of walk through the ones that I would choose. Um, but Circle of Sports also gives us blindness and detect thoughts for free, so you'll always know these. At level four, you get to choose a new cantrip. Um, I'm, I'll choose Guidance because Guidance is useful throughout the entire run of the game. And then you also get to choose a feat. There are two feats that I would choose, either ability improvement and buff up your wisdom, or I would go Warcaster. Druid tends to have a lot of concentration spells. At least a lot of the ones that I use are concentration. So Warcaster is a really great pickup because it gives you advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration. At level five, we unlock third level spells. We also unlock Wild Strike. Um, we can make an additional unarmed strike while in wild shape. Uh, and then we also get these spells Animate Dead and Gaseous Form that are always prepared because we're Circle of Spores Druid. At level six, we get two new Wild Shape Forms, Panther and Owlbear. And then we also get the Circle of Spores unique Fungal Infestation. This allows us to create fungal zombies from corpses. Uh, we can have four of them up and these last until they die, but they all have 
undead fortitude. So when they die, they come back up with one hit point. So they're great trash fodder. If you want to just throw them at an enemy, it gives them more targets to hit. Uh, we can only have four per long rest, though. So once they're gone, you can't raise any more again until after another long rest. So just be aware of that. At level seven, we get fourth level spells. Uh, our always prepared ones are Blight and Confusion, which are actually two really good spells. At level eight, we get another feat as well as another spell. And with this, I'm actually going to choose Ability Improvement and get my Wisdom up to 18. At level nine, we get fifth level spells, and the spells that we get from Circle of Spores is Cloud Kill and Contagion. At level 10, you're gonna take your final level of Druid. This gives you a second attack while you're in wild shape, but you also get the Circle of Spores feature, Spreading Spores, Spreading Spores, uh, cast in an AOE and an infixed 2d8 necrotic damage on all enemies in there, but you can cast it even on your allies and it won't affect your allies. Um, it's used on a bonus action, so you can still use your other spore ability and this at the same time. Your other spore ability also goes up from a d4 to a d8. At level 11, we're gonna go choose wizard. This unlocks three new cantrips you can kind of choose whatever you want. Um, since this is kind of a necromancy build, I'll go with like the poison, the acid options, and then light or something like that. As far as spells go, we won't be casting too many, but I kind of like to have um, shield, maybe a grease for a little bit of control, maybe feather fall if I want to. As you're gonna be a wizard, you can kind of freely sw swap out. So if you want to grab just a bunch of utility spells, you can. Uh, we'll hit Ray of Sickness just because we're a quote-unquote witch. Um, we'll do Magic Missile, False Life. I don't think it's going to be beneficial because we'll have the Symbiotic Entity entity up, so it will give us way more temporary hit points than we need. Uh, maybe Sleep, but Sleep will, might be useful. I don't know. But with it, we also get uh, Arcane Recovery, so we'll be able to replenish spell slots while out of combat. Uh, this is once per long rest, I believe. And unfortunately, because our intelligence is only eight, we can only prepare one spell now, but that will change as we uh, get the warped headband. At level two, we'll go for a second level of wizard. Uh, you can go necromancy if you want uh, just for the flavor. This will give you um, hit points equal to twice the spell slot level used. Uh, Blight's a big one that you can use for this. It'll just kind of give you some extra hit points. Uh, I said earlier transmutation. This gives you experimental alchemy where you can brew two alchemical solutions instead of one by making a base DC 15 medicine check. That's why you want to kind of go into medicine if you're going to go this route. I'm actually going to choose evocation because of these sculpt spells. I like to throw out like ice storms, which are evocation, but wall of fire also is evocation fireball. If I wanted to do it, uh, as you'll see, you kind of unlock a bunch of options uh, by taking the one level of wizard. You're able to scribe spells up to level six. And then for your level one spells, you can just take whatever you want. Maybe, Find familiar and expeditious retreat. Sounds good to me. Let's move into items. Uh, just as a caveat, I'm still kind of building this. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But um, like I said, top priority is getting the warped head headband of intellect. The only way you can do that is by killing the ogres in act one. You can't negotiate with them. You have to kill them to get it off the smart ogres body. So you have to get that. That sets your intelligence to 17 and allows you to cast five wizard spells instead of one. So you can now prepare five spells instead of one. On the back, I just have the Cloak of Elemental Absorption. I can absorb ele an elemental damage once per short rest. Uh, I'm wearing the Andamantine Scale Mail. You get this from the Grim Forge. Uh, it prevents critical hits. You can definitely wear a cloak like uh, Robe of the Weave, which gives me a plus one bonus to spell save, DC, and 
spell attack rolls, that might be good. Uh, and then whenever the wearer succeeds at saving throw against a spell, we gain two hit points and get two AC from that. That's definitely an option as well. For bracers, I just have Heracnir bracers. This gives me a free cast of telekinesis, which is pretty useful. You can throw people off ledges. Uh, you can also cast Mage Hand as a bonus action. It gives me a little bit of strength saving throws if I want. I also have the quick spell gloves here. Cantrips can be a, used as a bonus action once per short rest if I want to get a little bit extra damage in there with like, with like Bone Chill or my Firebolt. Um, for boots, I don't really have anything, so I just gave her boots of striding. When I cast a spell that requires concentration, I gain momentum, and while I'm concentrating, I can't be knocked prone or moved against my will. Druids have a lot of concentration spells, so this is a really good option if you want to take it. For my necklace, I have the Amulet of Restoration. I get Healing Word and Mass Healing Word as free casts, um, so I can use those, I believe, on my bonus action once per long rest, I think, maybe short rest. It is once per long rest. For my rings, I have the Ring of Mental Inhibition. This is when a foe fails a saving throw against one of my spells or actions. They gain mental fatigue for two turns. Mental fatigue gives them a minus one penalty to wisdom, intelligence, and Christmas saving throws for every turn remaining, which is actually really good for if you want to start controlling them. And then I have the Ring of Twilight because I didn't really have anything else. This just gives me a plus one bonus to AC while I'm obscured. So when I'm sneaking or something, I get plus one bonus to AC. I'm wielding Woe. Uh, this gives me a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. And then when creatures affected by my spells fail any associated saving throws, I get one to four hit points. Pretty nice. It allows me to cast Blight as well. And then I'm using Cethric Shield as my shield, which gives me another plus one bonus to spell save and spell attack rolls. And that can also shield bash and I have an advantage on dex saving throws. Alternatively, you can use staff of spell power instead of staff of woe if you don't have it yet. You can find that in Raphael's place, I believe. Um, you get a plus one bonus to spell save, DC and spell attack rolls, and then you get arcane battery. Okay, let's get into druid spells. At level five, I suggest taking insect plague uh, it's an amazing spell. It does a decent amount of damage every turn that an enemy is stuck in there. It creates difficult terrain, so it takes them longer to get out of it. And it helps you kind of clear the room where the enemy prioritizes getting out of it as opposed to going after you. If there's a path that's shorter to get out, they'll go that way instead and then just kind of stand there and you can pick them off across the room if you put it in a choke point. Same thing with Cloud Kill. Um, these are kind of interchangeable, but I like Insect Plague just a little bit more. The other level five spell I would recommend is Contra Elemental. This just gives you another body on the board. You already have your zombies. You can add Conjured and Elemental. It's not a concentration spell, unlike Insect Plague, which is. So you can cast this and kind of forget about it and go on and cast other spells. Having Mass Cure Wounds is actually pretty nice as well because it just gives you another option to heal your team. And druids are really good at kind of being a versatile spellcaster as opposed to all offensive or all defensive. They do a really great mix of both. And I think having this mass cure wounds just kind of helps a little bit if your entire team is getting bombarded by, say, AoE damage. For level four spells, I recommend Ice Storm. Ice Storm is really good. It gives uh, cold damage and bludgeoning damage both it has the ability to knock enemies prone and it creates an icy patch where enemies can fall if they try to move off of it it's a it's a great cc plus a decent damage spell plus it also doesn't take concentration so you can just kind of cast it and forget about it wall of fire is a really good spell as well this you can create a line of fire it is concentration but anybody that moves into it takes fire damage and if they stay in it they take fire damage if they leave and come back into it they take fire damage it's really good polymorph is a great cc spell this transforms a creature into a sheep then they don't do anything it's a concentration spell but they don't do anything just be wary that if you are fighting with other allies that the AI is controlling, they will not ignore the sheep like they should. Um, they will attack the sheep if it's a priority target and completely negate the spell. This is concentration as well. For level three, I recommend call lightning. Uh, it's a great spell. You basically call down a lightning bolt in a huge area 
And then for 10 turns uh, using concentration, every turn you can call down another lightning bolt in a different area if there's somebody still within the, the radius. Daylight is another one I would use. It's a kind of a situational spell, but it's really great at a certain level. It's where I got the Staff of Woe. It works really well against like undead um, and vampires and things. So having that in your back pocket is a really good spell because it, it just devastates them. So I would recommend getting that as well. For level two spells, I would recommend uh, Gust of Wind is pretty nice, uh, especially as a utility spell, because once you start getting higher levels, you start prioritizing those for your concentration. Uh, whereas Gust of Wind doesn't need it, and you can clear clouds. Like So like if an enemy drops a cloud kill or there's poison clouds or something, you can use that to kind of push everything out of the way. Uh, and it's pretty cheap as level two. I would also recommend uh, Hold Person. It is concentration, but it has helped me quite a bit. Um, you can just throw it on a big target, especially if you've run out of polymorph charges, you can use that instead and it'll hold them. And then I believe anybody that makes a melee attack gets an auto crit against them, which is great if you have two really decent martial classes running around with you. Moonbeam is great. Um, you cast it, it calls down a light that deals damage to anything in a small area of effect. And then every turn you can use an action to move it. So you can kind of move it around the battlefield if you want. It is concentration and it lasts for 10 rounds. Some of the more situational spells are um, Pass Without Trace, which can give you plus 10 bonus to stealth checks. Um, Lesser Restoration can cure disease, poison, paralysis, and blindness. Um, we don't really melee and bark skin I don't find as useful as it could be. Spike growth is great early on, but later on you get like insect plagues and others that replace it. But for early game, spike growth is really good. You just kind of lay it out and force the enemy to come to you and they have to walk through the spike growth, which basically halves their movement and they do damage every time they move. And then I take just, you know, healing word. I'll take a fairy fire sometime because just having advantage on attack rolls is, is great. It is a concentration spell though. Um, but having that can be good. And then, uh, usually like speak with animals. Now I have shadow heart in my party who is a bard and cast expeditious or long strider on the party. Um, if you don't have somebody who can cast long strider, this is the character that can cast long strider. This is a buff that can cast on everybody it's a free cast because it's a ritual spell and it lasts until a long rest it gives everybody three extra meters of movement so i always cast it after every long rest on everybody and it just really helps in combat especially if you have a monk or a barbarian that has extra movement you can really really tell how how great the movement is so this is something that you want if you don't have something in your party already doing it now on to the wizard side of things so this is where the dip into wizard really, really shines because Cone of Cold, I believe, is a level four, level five spell. And as a wizard, we only have level one spells. That's it. We don't have any more. Um, but because of how Larian has this set up, we can access up to level six spells. So all we do is we learn this spell. And then all of a sudden we have a new spell here. We have a level five spell, Cone of Cold, and we can memorize it. So now we have Cone of Cold and we can access it and we can cast it. It's amazing. It's, uh, I think it really helps multi-classing. I mean, it does really kind of make it OP to just dip a level into wizard. But, you know, for caster, especially like the druid that has some lackluster level six spells that this really kind of makes it more versatile of a casting class, which is why I kind of labeled this the green witch because it just gave me like, I can have a lot more control. I can kind of be the spell king. I can do a lot of, a lot more things that uh, druids are really limited to do. So it kind of opens up the possibilities of what your class can do. And that's it. That's the Green Witch. Uh, I 
am just getting into it. I've just stayed in Minsk, but I used her and she was very versatile. She was able to get a lot done. But like I said, the level six spells were real lackluster. So I was trying to find a way to make her a bit more useful. And I think the two wizard dip is really helpful for this. So I hope you enjoyed the build. If you liked what you saw, I stream on Twitch most days. You can see it on the link on your screen. Uh, also do the YouTube stuff of liking, commenting and subscribing. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks.